Hi everyone! Imagine we have a table, like the table right here. It has three rows and two columns. The first column has numbers. The second column has cells and some of them have a data test ID unchecked and a couple of cells have data test ID checked. What we want to do is to find all the rows with the second column having the checked data test ID and then grab the numbers in the first column and confirm they're equal to 23 and 45. So I'm going to show two implementations and talk about the difference. So first, what I like to do is to just start coding and have Cypress open on the side of my screen. So I'll say, give me table, rows, and doesn't matter. Let's just confirm that it's deep equal, not Johnny Depp equal, but deep equal to, well, in this case, we need those two rows to grab, right? 23 and 45. And now it fails and it retries, right? But obviously two dumb elements, a jQuery object is not e deep equal to an array of two numbers. So first, l let's see if we can grab the right number of rows. So what we're saying here is that we want to grab the rows. And I'm grabbing the rows because I want to go later from the row to the first column cell. Okay, that's why I'm saying give me a row. And wh what kind of rows we want to grab? Well, we can combine get and filter. Okay, so in this case, we can say, okay, well, here's where the problem begins, right? We can say has, and then let's say has um, TD with data test ID equals checked. All right. So in this case, right, we have now filtered down, right? Instead, right, let me just move it. Notice that we're now showing two rows, right? My Chrome is acting out today. Let me switch to Electron. Okay. So it has three rows and then it filtered down to the rows that have a cell. But it's not necessarily cell in the second column. So we want to limit ourselves to the TD elements that are nth child and it starts at one. So the second column would be this. Okay. So now we're looking at the right column. But why do we need get and filter? We can just put the same thing in a single selector, right? So it retries and retries and retries. All right. So we get the rows. Now we need to find the first column cell. So we're going to use the same approach, right? Give, give me all 2D elements but at the first position let's see what it gives us right so we are looking at the right rows right cells and then we have you know a jquery element and we can map using low dash map method each element to its inner text okay now you notice we're comparing an array of strings to an array of numbers so all we have to do is take this list and cyp actually we don't even need a low dash map we can simply say list map each item to a number perfect now this approach works but it fails if the table is not static because we split our chain into multiple commands and even though i'm using cypress version 12 sci then and sci then are not queries, they're commands that will stop retrying. So once this assertion fails, that's it. End of the line. So this is why I actually prefer Cypress map plugin. But before we switch this to Cypress map, let me show how I can demonstrate that retries stop. So I'm going to remove this attribute. Okay. And now it will just fail, right? Because the second column cells don't get this attribute. But instead, I'm gonna set those attributes dynamically, right? So set it on a second row and set it on a third row two seconds later. 
Okay, so this is where those uh, cells will get with attribute. And notice it only grabbed 23, right? And then failed. It, because as soon as it found that there is one element, it never waited for the second element. Okay, so this is where Cypress map is so convenient. So SciGet is a query, SciFind is a query. Okay, um, we can say, okay, then map each element. So SciMap comes from Cypress map plugin, and then map each string to a number. So it will call number with each item. And now look at what happens. Nothing, nothing, then one number and then two numbers. Because the entire chain is now a chain of queries in Cypress version 12, if it fails, an assertion, it backtracks up the chain of commands and says, I can only rerun the queries and all these are queries and I'm gonna get the elements from the page again, transform them and see if an assertion passes. This recipe is at my glebbachmantov.com uh, Gleb slash Cypress examples. You can find it there and see all the different implementations. And I will link the Cypress map plugin again in the description of this video.